lime soup and we're gonna have this put back in the pantry for this winter. I'm gonna make my uh, lemon and garlic zucchini soup and I've done this recipe for you before but I, I thought you know why can't I can this and then add my cream cheese at the end when I open the jar and that's what we're gonna do today. So we are going to cube up our zucchini. It's gonna go in this 12 quart stock pot. I've got a couple more I've gotta go pick out of the garden. You need some lemons and you need some chicken stock and I'm using a chicken base, low sodium. And then you're gonna need garlic and lemon juice. And, and some pepper. That's really all you need for this recipe. It's so simple and it's so delicious. So let me get to cubing this zucchini up. Go pick the others that I've got out there waiting for me. And uh, we'll see how much we can get made. And if I have more than a canner full, I'll take the rest to work tomorrow for the girls. All right, guys, don't forget to check the links in the description box. I've got a Zacon food link down there. Sorry, my nose itches. Where you can go shop for our uh, deeply discounted bulk meats and they're top quality. Sign up for free, they'll email you and they're gonna have an event that's close to you in your area and you can go purchase whatever you need. All right guys, and go visit me on Facebook. Say hi. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so we've got a pretty full, this is probably, I'm guessing, 10 quarts, maybe nine quarts of zucchini and I had two yellow squash in the refrigerator that I needed to use. I picked those the day before yesterday. Gotta use them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken base in here. And you want it to cover the squash. And I'm using the guidelines out of the resource book, Putting Food By. This is a great book, uh, very detailed, gives you the why. Um, for those of you that ask a lot of questions and, and need those questions answered before you feel safe enough to can, this is a great book. Um, anyways, on page 153, it, it gives you the hot pack only for summer squash and zucchini, and that's what we're doing here today. But um, you can can that just sliced or cubed in uniform pieces. Um, and then for what I'm gonna do, the pint and a half size jars, it's calling for 30 minutes for a quart, or 30 minutes for a pint, or 40 minutes for a quart. And because there's no measurement for, or timing for the pint and a half, we're gonna go with the 40 minutes and keep it safe. So we wanna go ahead and get some garlic in here. And we like lots of garlic. Can't have too much garlic. So for this amount, I'm gonna go ahead and say we want, as Four for black tablespoons. pepper, we're gonna go ahead and have a healthy three tablespoons. It's a lot of soup, so don't worry. And then we're gonna need some lemon juice. So we're gonna juice our lemons. I've got three lemons here. I want a fair amount of lemon flavor. And really, this is to taste, so as soon as the soup cooks down and I get to puree it, I'll taste it for acidity level because this is a lemony soup. And then when you open these jars, have a fresh lemon to zest over the top. I usually zest inside the soup as well, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not sure what will change in the canning process, if that makes sense to you. So I'm staying on the safe side. I want to enjoy this soup the way I enjoy it in the summer. Whoops. In the pot. We're almost there. So I'm going to give it a little bit of extra, maybe a quarter of a cup. So probably a third of a cup total, because these were not real juicy lemons. We're gonna get this on the stove, cover this with the rest of the stock, and I'll bring you over and let you see what's going on. Okay, so our soup has been on about 30 minutes to get that zucchini nice and tender. And now, as I let off that steam, we're gonna go ahead and take the immersion blender and blend this. And you want this pretty brothy, because 
we are going to, I mean, it's still in chunks now, but there's quite a bit of broth in here. And we want it that way. We want it to be brothy, if that makes sense. So let's give it a whack. I did want to tell you that all total, I had about um, 10 cups of stock. So now it's time to taste test. It's really, really hot, but I've got it the perfect consistency. It's nice and nice and brothy, but I want to taste for lemon, pepper, and garlic, and make sure it feels like it has enough salt. Um, I don't over salt if I can help it. So. Uh, and remember, your spices might become more intense after the canning process. These particular spices should not, but let me get a taste of this. Mmm. Oh, I love this soup. Oh, it is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that third of a cup of lemon juice, yum. And the garlic. It's so good. And you can taste both of the squash, actually. I can detect a little bit of that yellow squash as well. So I'm gonna bring you in close. We're gonna fill these jars and get it in the canner. And then you can really see the consistency of how thin it is. All right, we're ready to start filling our jars. And then take note of how much of a liquid this is. And when we serve it up, I will add cream cheese to this because that's my recipe. So it's absolutely fantastic and of course I'm making a mess <laughs> that's why there's a towel down and you want a half an inch of head space and you don't have to debubble real liquidy stuff I kind of you know will take the jar like this but there's all the bubbles are going to come to the top grab another jar for the next and I've got those in the sink of hot water very hot and now I can take my vinegar, I dip my napkin in vinegar. Oh, this could use just a tablespoon or so or more. And wipe the rim of your jar. This is your last chance to check for any mix. I like to get that, double check that. Go ahead and grab a lid that have been soaking in hot water and a ring. Put your lid and ring on, and finger tight. We're putting this in the canner. The canner is all warmed up to about 180 degrees, so it won't crack my jars. Um, these jars are tempered with hot water and now hot soup. So let's get the rest of the canner loaded. I'll let you know how much made and so I'm putting my last one and a half pint jar in here and I did find an extra jar. So uh, we have eight one and a half pint jars in the canner and this is the all American canner. You want to make sure that you treat the rim of your canner with some uh, petroleum jelly every two or three canning sessions. So it, it lets go once you've uh, released all the pressure or it's released on its own. And I'm gonna put the lid on, bring this up to temp, put it on high. When it starts venting out of this vent hole, um, you let it vent for 10 minutes. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, put your weight on. And for my altitude, it's 15 pounds of pressure. And so you need to check your altitude. And then we're gonna time this once it starts rocking and my gauge comes up to 15 pounds. Then we are gonna time it for 40 minutes because we wanna be on the safe side since these are larger than a pint jar. All right, guys, I can't wait to bring it back out of the canner for you and let you see what the end result is. And we've got some leftover for lunch tomorrow. So <laughs> that's a great canning session. All right, guys. I'll so everything's done in the canner. It processed for 40 minutes once it came up to speed and we vented for 10 minutes. So I'm going to bring these jars out and you want to bring them out and set them on a towel on top of your counter or on, you know, a wooden cutting board is always good because it's, it doesn't uh, stay too cool. But these are still boiling in the jars to make sure you can see that. And the other thing I want to tell you is you always want to pick up your jar from below the rim. If you pick it up by this ring, you have the chance of it um, actually coming off and it could cause a 
a burn um, because they loosen up. This one's loose, I can tell you. They loosen up in the can or in the canning process. And all that ring is there for is to keep the lid in place, but not necessarily sealed. The vacuum that's caused from when it cools down creates that seal. So I'm gonna get these jars out and I hope it inspires you, you guys. I've canned my most very favorite soup in the summertime and I can't wait to enjoy it this winter. All I have to do that is being add said, cream cheese. I can't wait to see you next time. I hope it inspires you to maybe start canning. Try your hand at making the soup first and see if it's worthy of your canning skills. And as always guys, check your resources, make sure that you're canning safe and you're canning healthy for your family. And I know everything that's in there. There's not a paragraph that explains what's in my soup. So that makes me very happy. I can't wait to see you next time. Go check out all the links and whoop, happy canning. <laughs> mm. Tomorrow morning, I'll take the rings off, wash my jars. You don't necessarily have to do that after a water bath, but during this process, stuff comes out of your jars, even though my water is clear, you want to make sure that you wash your jars really good, take your rings off, make sure you have a good seal, and then label them, and uh, you're good to go. Put them in the pantry, and you don't have to go shopping. All right, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.